FIFA. FIFA. Aja. Aja. Mabili na mabuto pambi. Mabili. Mabili na mabuto pambi. Mabili. Aja. Comrades, si si ambi ngelela. Kule press briefing, SN Zanjia Manje. We are through turbulent times right now, which are very difficult times. But jenga bantu istumbe ne in these forces we exchange. Sikuwa zuwe ngoba lento bambisa na si anamugela kakuulu makomre. Sikuwa zibonga kakuulu wewe zaga la yuko sisi sapo chuo baba ubusholos. Yesi kwa sisi zaga kena nini kubega yuko. So kaba kaba zama lugo loa. La makomre ni. Sine se hambele sa es es kona es ipuma epoli ni eh is hambele es ipuma epoli ni be province ANC ipuma langa province eh obi obi zola ke ungrai eh gwe ni kumbi dungwe hinya nje siba eh ne NEC member of MKMVA eh commander comrade Karl Niaus commander Mrs. Sivangala on my right. No choice. See you. I'm on this base. Yes, in Kanja. O commander, unke, umtu tu zeli zamo. Kamanda. Comrade, I am comrade commander. Ora, kumete umpana foot. Yimi mpe chebule base. No pambisa na nama comrade. O kuba lomzavala sufigela ubaba mshulos. Gizotela ubuti jengo basi kona lakile press briefing jenga maji avokaba nige basi pingele le gaba fige na kuna bezi na aku ichi ni kuwa zuksapo chumba mshulo zimzawa la zukupe gua mbele pambi. Aja. Thank you, Commander Komede, Comrades, Ladies and Gentlemen. This week has been one of the most tragic weeks in the history of South Africa. We saw this week how one of the most illustrious commanders of Umkontu Isizwe, our beloved President Jacob Zuma, was humiliated once again. Many comrades throughout the country have expressed their heartbreak and their outrage and their anger about what had been done by that ruling of the Constitutional Court and by the Acting Chief Justice, which was a travesty of justice. We know very well Comrades, that President Zuma has been pursued for the last 22 years by the enemies of the people. That his legal problems had always been informed by political factionalism and by shenanigans between the state authorities, especially the national prosecuting authority and some politicians also within our beloved African National Congress. Comrades, I do not need to remind you and the members of the media of the manner in which the persecution with regards to the arms deal case has been manipulated by members of the National Prosecuting Authority in conjunction with politicians who wanted to destroy President Zuma's political career. I do not need to remind you of those terrible so-called spy tape recordings where there were members of the National Prosecuting Authority 
discussing the exact time and the right approach on how to charge President Zuma at a time that will be the most damaging for his political career. For the sake of understanding again exactly what has been done to President Zuma, I went through the transcriptions of those tapes. There are shocking extracts that I can take from there. A discussion between a senior businessman and someone who's been very prominent in our political world, a certain Mr. Saki Makuzoma, who was discussing with members of the National Prosecuting Authority about how President Zuma should be destroyed. And in those discussions, and I'm not making it up because they are transcriptions, he refers to President Zuma as a peasant and a Zulu boy. Now this is the background that has led to the arms deal, I don't want to say prosecution, but persecution that has been going on for over 20 years on politically trumped up charges. Subsequently, we know what has happened with regards to the Commission for Inquiry into State Capture. We know how that commission came about through a very flimsy and hastily written report by the previous protector, public protector, Advocate Tuli Badonsela. And how that report was used to force President Zuma to eventually announce the State Capture Commission. Let me emphasize, comrades, that President Zuma did not do so out of his own volition, but he was forced to do so. Recently, in a press conference on the South African Broadcasting Corporation television, Advocate Madonsela declared that the Zuma, that the Zondu Commission was first and foremost appointed in order to target President Zuma. And the manner in which the Zondu Commission has been operating right from the beginning confirms what Advocate Madonsela told us. We have seen how the Deputy Chief Justice, who was also the chair of the Zondu Commission, had been most intolerant towards President Zuma. Now President Zuma was specifically targeted to be called out in public press conferences when he was unable to attend the Zondu hearings because of ill health. How the truth about President, Zondu, President Zuma's ill health was questioned by Mr. Justice Zondu publicly. How this whole situation continued. We have seen also the prejudice in which President Zondu, President, uh, Deputy President Zondu, treated President Zuma. All of this was carefully stipulated by President Zuma and through a legal process, through his legal team, taken to the Zondu Commission with a request that on the basis of the demonstrable prejudice of the Deputy Chief Justice, he had to recuse himself. We also know, comrades and members of the media, that the Deputy Chief Justice decided to make himself a material witness and at the same time the final arbiter and judge in the matter of his recusal. And when President Zuma quite correctly decided to take the matter to the High Court on appeal, the Deputy Chief Justice and the Commission of Inquiry into State Capture decided to rush past that appeal in the High Court and to go to the Constitutional Court. 
President Zuma had explained in detail his reasons for why he could no longer see his way open to appear in front of the Commission of Inquiry into State Capture under the chairperson of the Deputy Chief Justice. He also made it unequivocally clear that he was not opposed to appearing in front of the Commission, but he could not subject himself to the subjective process and the biasness that was brought against him by the Deputy <coughs> Chief Justice. President Zuma also made it clear that he felt that his basic constitutional rights have been compromised fundamentally by this rush to the Constitutional Court while there was still an appeal process going on in the High Court. He also raised the manner in which the Constitutional Court instructed that he would not have the right to remain silent in order not to incriminate himself. All of these issues are fundamental constitutional matters which had been eroded away and President Zuma wrote a number of letters to us as the citizens of South Africa but finally also to the justices, to the Chief Justice of the Constitutional Court explaining why he believes that he specifically targeted and how his constitutional rights are being undermined. Despite all of this, comrades, we saw a travesty of justice happening in front of our eyes this week with that judgment of the acting Chief Justice, Justice Sissi Kampere. What we have seen in the past under the apartheid regime is that people could be imprisoned without being properly put on trial. But it is the first time in the history of our democratic South Africa that a person has now been sentenced on the basis of a judicial procedure and not a proper trial. This is indeed a travesty of justice and it brings the whole legal system into disrepute. It is in this context that we believe that President Zuma's rights have been fundamentally compromised. And we know why this is the case. Because the law has now been turned into a selective instrument in order to fight political and factional battles. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. The law has become the handling of those who oppose the fundamental transformation of our country. Mm. We know that President Zuma and also other comrades, including also the Secretary General of the African National Congress, Comrade Ace Magashule, and a number of other comrades within the ANC have been specifically targeted because of their support for radical economic transformation. Yes, yes, yes. And we say that this is an unacceptable situation because Lady Justice has to be blind that everyone has to be treated on an equal basis without any prejudice and that should include also President Zuma, Comrade Ace Magashule and everyone else. We cannot have selective justice nor can we have a situation that the very important fight against corruption must be used in a selective way for party political battles and for factional battles also within our beloved movement, the African National Congress. This is unacceptable. It is on that basis 
that the Mkontui Ceasefire Military Veterans Association have carefully discussed what is going on in our country over a considerable period of time. On the 18th of August last year, we issued a lengthy press statement which we sent to the National Executive of the ANC where we called for the National Executive of the ANC to address these particular issues and specifically also the problem of selective justice and the manner in which President Zuma and others are being targeted. We said that the factionalism within the National Executive of the African National Congress is destroying our beloved movement, is leading to a situation where the ANC cannot deliver to the people, that service delivery is coming to a standstill, and that the African National Congress's National Executive Committee is failing to function properly. We also proceeded then to express our support for President Zuma and we warned that there's a continuation of the targeting of President Zuma, the manner in which he's been dragged in front of the courts for the last 20 years. If that continues, and especially in the last few months we've warned, that if President Zuma is going to be imprisoned, that there will be instability and unrest in South Africa. Yes, 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 yes. Your response indicates exactly the situation that we face ourselves with now. We've warned the National Executive Committee of the ANC and also the justices in the Constitutional Court and also the Deputy Chief Justice, Mr. Justice Onu, that if cool heads and minds do not prevail, if President Zuma continue to be targeted, and if President Zuma is eventually sentenced to prison, that our country will be torn apart. That violence yes. will be inevitable mm. because of this. Mm. Come on, come on. Yes. Now, comrades, we do not want violence. Yes. We do not want violence. We want to see our country to be a peaceful country. We want to see unity in Congress and amongst our whole nation. But we've warned, and we as Umkonotubi Sinswe Military Veterans Association, because of the military training of our members, have the ability to understand what happens in society. We can understand what the consequences will be of certain actions. We have warned that the consequences of now, I saw a statement from our National Executive Committee of the African National Congress this afternoon. That statement said that the NEC of the ANC that was due to sit over this weekend have been suspended, postponed, because of the concern that the NEC has about the situation that is developing in our country and specifically also here in KwaZulu Natal. They then made a call for peace and for a stable way in approaching this situation. I couldn't help but to think, but we warned those members of our National Executive Committee. We warned them that this situation will eventually come if the continuing targeting and the continuing political, factional approach towards President Zuma is to continue. So there can be no surprises. We are not against our National Executive Committee of the African National Congress calling for peace and stability. We are not against that at all. 
But it cannot be that that approach is at the same time with the intention to continue this targeting and vilification of President Trump. It also cannot be that this approach will continue while President Zuma is to be in prison. Yeah. Let us as MKMBA be unequivocally clear. We are fundamentally opposed to the arrest and imprisonment of President Zuma. Come on, cut it! We will execute our democratic right to speak out against this because we've got the right to freedom of speech yes. to do so. Yes. We will continue to object to this vilification of President Zuma and we will continue to oppose President Zuma's imprisonment. Mm. And we do so on the basis of principle. President Zuma's legal rights have been undermined. What we saw in the judgment of the acting Chief Justice was not justice, but it was indeed the dictatorship of the judiciary. President Zuma, because the Constitutional Court is the highest court, is the apex court, has not been given even an opportunity to appeal. So he's being forced into this situation without his legal rights <laughs> and legal due process being recognized. So comrades from the side of Umkonti, we say for a military veterans association, we will continue to oppose President Zuma's arrest and imprisonment. It can not happen. <laughs> but we will do so and I say this specifically for the members of the media so yes. that there's no misunderstanding. We will do so within the context of recognizing the parameters of the law. We will act within the law, yes. but we will most definitely oppose it. Nanda. I know that President Zuma has been working on a number of processes to challenge this terrible judgment by the Constitutional Court. I do not want to speculate about those, but it most probably can include also an appeal to the Constitutional Court that his judgment has to be heard again and appealed on, and also an objection to a warrant of arrest. <laughs> From the side of President Zuma, I know that Baba will do everything possible in order to act in accordance with the law. I also know that he will do everything possible in order to avoid unrest, violence and bloodshed. That is not what our president wants. He has dedicated his life to the liberation struggle. President Nuba know what war is. And he would not want his country to be torn apart by war. But he also knows, because he fought for it throughout his life, what justice is. And and with this, I, we want to conclude this statement of the Contourisis Way Military Veterans Association. President Zuma has stated throughout that the reason why he is opposed to what was happening in the Zondu Commission to himself and also what was happening in the two hearings of the Constitutional Court was because he believes that the Constitution that he fought so hard for, the Constitution that he himself helped to get adopted in the Constitutional Assembly of which he was a member, 
is being fundamentally undermined. And you will recall, comrades and members of the media, from the last letter the President Zuma sent to the Chief Justice, he stated clearly, I feel so strongly about these constitutional principles and my rights being trampled on that if needs be, I'm prepared to go to jail for these principles. Now, from the perspective of Mkonti, which is where Military Veterans Association, that is what a principled commander and leader will do. And President Zuma is such a principled leader. That's why when we came here, a few months ago to visit President Zuma, we expressed our full support to him. And that support has not waned for one moment. I've been sent here by the National Executive Committee of Mkontubi Siswe Military Veterans Association to deliver this message, which is a summary of the resolutions that we've taken that we will continue to support President Jacob Zuma to the hilt. And the MKNBA NEC asked me to convey also that this is not something new. At our national elective conference, the fifth national conference of MKNBA, that was held in 2017 at the Birchwood Conference Center, we adopted a resolution of support for President Zuma. And we are continuing consistently to execute that mandate that our national conference gave us. Therefore, comrades and members of the media, the presence of members of Mkonti Wisizwe Military Veterans Association at the residence of President Zuma at Nkandla is not coincidental. Their presence here is because of that resolution of MKMBA. And they have the full support of the full Nkontubisizwe Military Veterans Association and the National Executive Committee of MKMBA. When I can, we will be determined. Yeah. We will engage, we will be political, but we will be uncompromising in our position that our commander in chief cannot go to jail. Yes, 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 yes. We say to the world, not just to South Africa, to the world. Look at what is happening here. Understand the injustice that has been perpetrated against one of the greatest liberation soldiers mm. of the African mm. National Congress over two decades mm. now. And raise your outrage, not just as South Africans, but as the whole world. We call on the people of Africa, and we call especially also on the liberation movements here in Southern Africa, who have known President Zuma intimately as one of the great commanders of Mkonti Wisis, who've worked with him in Mozambique, in Angola, in Swaziland, in Lesotho, in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, in Tanzania. I can continue to mention names of all those countries who know that this is not a person that is a thief, this is not a person who is a fraud, but this is a liberation fighter. The people of KwaZulu-Natal know that if there's one person who should take all the praise for the peace that was eventually created in KwaZulu-Natal, despite the third false activities that the National Party Apartheid government stoked on, it was President Zuma. Mm. Mm. Yes. The people of Rwanda and Burundi know that President Zuma was central 
to the peacekeeping process that brought peace to them. Those are the characteristics of Jacob Zuma that we know. And the people of Africa know President Zuma accordingly. It is an outrage that a liberation fighter, a commander of Nkontiwi Sizwe, a man of dignity, integrity and peace, is to be imprisoned. But at the same time, the former apartheid president F.W. de Klerk is walking the streets of South Africa free. Yeah. At the same time, a man which is known as Dr. Death, Dr. Votabasson, who led the chemical weapons program of the apartheid regime, is free. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we remember how the former apartheid president, Mr. P.W. Bota, showed the middle finger to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Ah. Refused to go and give evidence, mm. but he was treated with kid gloves. Yes. He was given a puffy little sentence and sent home to go and rest and die in peace. Mm. <laughs> but compared to that, our liberation fighter and president, Comrade Zuma, is to be imprisoned. I don't think we need to beat around the bush. Yes. It is a utter shame that our African National Congress, our beloved liberation movement, who is now also the governing party in this country, can do this to one of their own. Comrades, with those words, I have explained the position of Mkontobi Seaspeak Military Veterans Association. I've been rather long in this statement, but I believed and MKMBA, the leadership of MKMBA believes, that it was critically important to explain the history, the genesis of this negative, exploitative and factional battle that has been going on against President Zuma for now more than 20 years. What we see now with the intention to imprison President Zuma, and I must tell you, comrades, there is a warrant of arrest that has been issued, signed by the acting Chief Justice, Justice Sisi Kampepe. What we see now is the culmination of the injustice that has been committed against President Zuma over years. And from the side of Mkontubi Sitwe Military Veterans Association, we say enough is enough. This now is where it is going to stop. We will not tolerate it to go on any more further. Uh, program director, I think we can give the opportunity to the other comrades who are here to just say a few words, also as an expression of their commitment and the way in which they've been present here for a long time to protect and support President Zuma. Thank you. Yes, Yabonga, comrade Khan. No umut lana gu bela guti akube kona akweza guti. As a nation and forces of a revolution, guti buyele esmuele ibela gu yona siabondo si kuhamba kujagala. Sina we have walked as a nation in the shadow of death, and we shall not fear death at all. We will resist, but we will see when we get there what's happening. We will see when we get there. O kompletin zo pelo kuti akulu me manje na o kompleti o komanda o o dia o komanda ke agas begele mabila macha. 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 Viva MC Viva. Viva. Viva MC Viva. Viva. Viva MK MP A the military wing of the MC Viva. Viva. Viva Women's League Viva. Viva. Tintin Bogotu at Tintin Bafas. Viva.
Mr. Nihaus, Linda Mnisi from News from Africa. I don't know if you are aware that saying that you're opposed and will not allow the former president to be arrested is, of course, defiance to the Constitution, the supreme law of this country. Number two, you say that you will form a human shield. Preventing police from doing their work is a criminal offence. And I'd also like to ask about a similar incident that we saw. Perhaps your members may be able to clarify on that. A police van being turned away. Is that what you mean explicitly when you say you're going to, start to, to stop the arrest? Let's deal with every question and then I'll answer it because I think that's easier for everyone to follow. Sure. As far as I know, the police van that came here was on an ordinary patrol. The police clarified the situation and the members of MKMDA clarified it. I was surprised that the media tried to make something 
out of what was really not an incident, and not even an incident from the side of the African police service. Let me emphasize again what I've said throughout this statement. Umkonto we says where military veterans association will act within the confines and the parameters of the law. There is nothing illegal about forming a human shield. There is nothing illegal, but there's nothing illegal about it. There's also nothing illegal about any one of us, whether it is MKMBA or anyone who is present here or throughout the country, members of the ANC and concerned South African citizens, to use their right to freedom of speech and to express their fundamental opposition to President Zuma being arrested. I fought for that freedom of speech. These comrades who are with me fought for that freedom of speech. We know fellow comrades, fellow cadres, who laid their lives down for that freedom of speech. We will not simply sell it away. We will not be intimidated. Yes. I told you quite early on in my statement that MKMBA had written and sent press statements to the National Executive Committee of the ANC. We went on national television warning that if President Zuma is to be arrested, it is going to cause upheaval and instability in South Africa. Not because we want it, not because that's what we are planning, but because we can see what the reaction will be to such an ill-judged action. I'm, I'm so sorry, wait. I'm, I'm sorry to interject, now. Mr. Mr. No, no, I, this okay. is not a debate. Okay. You will <laughs> ask, ask your question, I will ask. <laughs> then, if you want to do a follow-up question, you will ask. I'm sorry that I have to teach you the craft of We have lost that this situation will develop. Therefore, we cannot but say to our fellow members in the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress who now, because this situation has developed, and because they now had to suspend an important National Executive Committee hearing, we cannot help but to say to them, in a comradely way, comrades, we wish you had listened. We had told you so. Yes. Yes. So now can I please invite you to ask your follow-up question <laughs> as a journalist and someone who the journalist is engaging with. Mr. Nihal's surely as a responsible leader, shouldn't you be inviting people to, or telling people rather, to stay at home, given the fact that we're facing a third wave and allow the law to unfold, as you put it. You've told us that you believe in following the law. We will just allow us to leave. We thought this was a media If you don't have order and you don't want us here, we cannot have a situation where journalists ask a question and there are bullies here. I don't want to you can't 